we honor the reading of God's word by standing, I want to ask you to stand with me as we read only one verse of scripture today and pray. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26 says this. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Join me in prayer. Father, thank you today for your word. I pray God that it will, by your Holy Spirit, be activated in all of us today as we bring the word today. Father, I ask for your anointing to preach and I pray God for your anointing on every ear to hear and every heart to understand that we might hear, understand, and receive your word. Father, that as we hear and hear the word of God, that faith will arise in us, and we will appropriate your provision for us as the people of God. We thank you for it today. We release your Holy Spirit now. We take authority over the evil one, that he has no place here. And I thank you, Father for having your way in every heart and life. In Jesus' name, and God's people said, Amen. Amen. And you can be seated. The Lord said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Today we're going to talk about God being a healer. He wants us to know him as a healer how well do you know the Lord today well most people know of him many people know him through education some people they know him through tradition Many know him because they have heard his name taken in vain. Isn't it sad? But that's the only way some people know God. They have heard his name taken in vain. They didn't get it any other way. Some people know him personally through salvation and others know him in a deeper way through discipleship. And through the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Some know him as a friend. That sticks closer than a brother. That never leaves them nor forsakes them. Some know him as a provider. But the thing that God wants us to get today is to deal with this. Do you know him As a healer, because he said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Do you know him that way? I want us to look at the setting of our text today. That one verse, we just read one verse, so let's kind of get the setting of it. Israel had just been delivered by a mighty deliverance. They have ju- when, when God spoke this to them, they had just witnessed firsthand their God demonstrate his faithfulness to them by making a way where there was no way. How many of you know that God is a God that makes a way for his people where there seemeth not to be a way? Yes, he's a way maker. I hope you've experienced some of that in your life. Israel had been held captive for years by a cruel and godless king who had made their lives a living 
hell. And they had cried out to God in their anguish. And God had raised up a deliverer for them. The scripture says that God had seen their afflictions. And he had heard their cries. Aren't you glad today that you and I serve an attentive God? There is not anything going on in this world that is catching him off guard or by surprise and most definitely not in the lives of his children. He is a very attentive God. The Bible says in Hebrews that all things are open. They're naked and open with him to whom we have to do. He's not a silent observer either. But he is actively involved in the lives of his people. Do you realize this morning that he has us in his mighty hands? And the word of God assures you and me that nothing can remove us, nothing can prize us, nothing can take us out of his hands. I hope you realize today, you are in God's hands. One day this week, I was walking on our road as I often do in the morning. And I like to get out there in the early morning and walk and make it a prayer walk. And this revelation came forcefully to me. I found myself asking God to help me to simply settle down in His hands. We feel like we got to run and we got to do and we got to figure out and we've got to analyze and we've got to be so busy. And all the time God said, I got you. Settle down, son. Trust me. Listen to me. Follow me. Don't be afraid. Settle down. How many of you know? That our God is working even when we don't see him working. How many of you recognize when God steps in the middle of your situation? I hope you do. I hope you're you're watching for him and, and expecting him to. And I hope that you recognize when he steps in the middle of your situation and begins to turn it. I hope you believe that anything the enemy tries to use against you, God will turn it to your good. I heard it said already today, he's a good God. He's a faithful God. And he's so good to us and he's so faithful that he's already assured us If the enemy tries to do something to you, I'm going to turn it around. And before it's over with, it's going to turn out for your good. Hallelujah. The Word of God says He works all things together for the good to them that love Him and are called according to His purposes. Child of God, I want you to know that God is working on your behalf and He never stops. He never slumbers. He never sleeps. He never has to adjust his plan. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the way you see Jesus respond to the needs in the Bible, as you read those stories about God's people, and you see God respond in those needs, it is a revelation of the will of God and how he will respond to you Today, Israel had literally come to an impasse. And it looked as if the enemy would overtake them and defeat them and take them back into that captivity. But God, Regardless of what kind of news comes to you that may disturb you or upset you, just add that to the end of it. 
But God, I'm telling you, God was there. Sometimes God doesn't show up when we think he ought to. But he'll show up right on time. Sometimes it seems like it's the 11th hour. But when he comes, you can't miss him. Amen? God opened the Red Sea for his people. Think about that. Think about that. Here they stand. They're they're there because God has brought them there. And there they stand. They can't go any further. There's a Red Sea. So God miraculously opens that Red Sea. And Israel, in faith, stepped through that sea on dry land. That's another miracle, isn't it? God did... He didn't just open it for them. He made a path for them and dried it out. They went through on dry land. And the waters, the Bible says, they stood up on a, like a, in a heap, like a wall on both sides of them. And they came through, recognizing that God was supernaturally, miraculously doing that for them. You know what? When you're experiencing God's deliverance, it's imperative that you stay in faith and that you stay on His path. That's just, I don't know who that's for here today. Maybe out there on Facebook. But when you're experiencing God's deliverance, it's important that you stay in faith. And it's important that you stay on His path. Don't forget that. What an experience it must have been for Israel. How obvious. How convincing it was to them that God was doing this for them. And the enemy did just what he always does. He tried to pursue them. But he couldn't stand against the Lord. The Bible says that God caused the enemy's plan to ravel. Don't you love it when God turns the enemy's plan around and lets you see it? Have you ever experienced that? The Bible says that Pharaoh and his army drove their chariots hard, but God caused their wheels to run off of them. And that dry path that Israel was on. God caused it to be a mire pit for the enemy. And they began to bog down. And that wall of water that was standing up for the people of God. God turned it loose on the enemy. And drowned them in the midst of the sea. Oh, hallelujah. Israel saw with their own eyes the enemy being destroyed in front of them. And all the time, they knew it was not their doing. They knew it was God's. You know what? There is no victory that you can experience that is as sweet as one that is given to you by the Lord and the revelation that you could not have done it on your own. No wonder Miriam and the ladies broke out with tambourines and dance singing, I will sing unto the Lord for he hath triumphed gloriously the horse and the rider thrown into the sea. You just might be Pentecostal if you're subject to breaking out into a little victory dance at a time like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's give God praise today. Now, I want us to move a little closer to the point of the message today. 
You see, the battle, the battles I should say, and the trials were not over for the children of Israel. They rejoiced in that victory. No doubt they thought, whew, we're done with Pharaoh. We're done with, with making those bricks forever. We're headed to the promised land. That's probably something they thought at first. But the scripture points out that the battles and the trials were not over for the children of Israel. There would be more hardships to face. And more devils to defeat. But listen to this. There was a pattern being established in their approach that needs to be established by us. There was a pattern. I said God was trying to establish a pattern in their lives. And I believe that he wants us to get the same principle for our walk. You see, soon after the crossing of the Red Sea and the rejoicing in such a miraculous victory, there was another threatening hardship that they had to get through. Soon, they found that they didn't have any drinking water. And they began to start to get desperate about the fact there was no drinking water for them and for their animals. And the more the time passed, the more urgent it became. Days went by, and they finally discovered some water. But guess what? They couldn't drink it. It was bitter. It was poisonous. And they're fined. Their glee to, to their uh, discovery turned into disappointment, inconvenience, and increased desperation. But I want you to watch because revelation was about to happen. How many of you know that God is very consistent in how he deals with his people? With all the murmuring, with all the complaining, with all the groaning, oh Moses, what are we going to do? We're so thirsty, my lips are so parched. Our animals need water. Mo, what are we going to do? With all of that, Moses once again cried out to God. And God showed him a tree. Not just any tree. I'm sure there was a lot of trees around there. But God showed him a specific tree and he instructed him to throw it into the water. And when he did it in faith and obedience, the waters were made pure and the people and their animals were refreshed. What was God teaching his people at that point? I believe it's a lesson you and I need to learn right now. So pay attention. The thing that he was teaching his people is this. Depend upon me always at all times, even in the face of impossibilities. Depend on Jesus at all times, especially when you're facing impossibilities. How many of you know there is nothing impossible with God? He said there's nothing impossible to him that believeth. Do you believe that? Do you really believe that? Well, if you really believe that, stop panicking and murmuring when you run up against a hardship. Oh, me or amen one. Hope you got your steel toes on this morning. But if we really believe that, 
instead of panicking when we're dealing with some of the stuff we have to deal with, instead of complaining and whining and reciting all the hardship we're going through, oh, you just don't know, woe is me, gloom, despair, and agony on me. If it wasn't for bad luck, you know that. We get started and we don't know when to quit. But if we really believe, when we face those things, immediately we say, well, God, help me settle down in your hand right now. I know you got me in your hand. Help me to settle down right now. Lord, I, I, I'm going to look for the opening. I'm going to look for the path. I'm going to look for the way you're making for me where there don't seem to be a way for me, but I'm going to trust you. So now let's talk about where we are in the world today. Every day, every day, my wife won't even watch the news anymore. I sneak and watch it a little bit so I can kind of take a temperature of what's going on. She don't even want me to tell her what I see. But every day there is the constant news of people perishing through violent weather, wildfires, and of course the pandemic. Just yesterday morning early as I was watching the news, I heard a guy say that severe storms that used to be occasional are now frequent. Well, duh, I think we've all seen that. COVID seems to be a worldwide threat now. These are perilous times. No doubt. But the Bible says in the last days there will be perilous times. Y'all reckon we're here? These are days, listen to these. These days that we're in are days that are either hardening men's hearts or softening them. One of the two. Days... That men are either becoming more defiant in their rebellion. And we're seeing a lot of that, aren't we? Or their hearts are being softened and they're turning to the Lord. These are days that call for and will surely reveal where you and I stand in our beliefs. But listen to me, child of God. There is a difference between you and the world when it comes to facing these things. Y'all get it? Y'all hear what I said? Do you believe it? There's a difference between you and the world when it comes to facing life's challenges. What is the difference? The difference is our covenant with Almighty God. That covenant covers a lot of territory. Actually, it covers everything that you could ever face in life on this earth. But we're going to zero in on one specific provision of covenant. One that I believe if we ever had any revelation on, if we ever had any faith on, we must have clear revelation and we must have faith on this in these days. It is one that we need. And it is one that the world needs. I'm talking today about healing. The church needs this. 
and the world needs it. But the world is never going to get it unless the church gets it. So, once again, back to Israel. They've come through the Red Sea. They've come through this thing with the poisonous water and how God has made it pure for them. And he reminds them of his faithfulness toward them. His manifestation to them when they were in Egypt. You see... They had all seen the sweeping plagues of Egypt. Remember those plagues, the pestilence, the boils, even hemorrhoids? They had witnessed the death angel visiting every household but passing over them. The death angel had came and taken the firstborn out of every household. Yet they had seen God spare them and pass over them with his protection. Even exemption when he saw the blood on the doorpost that spoke of their faith, their obedience, and their covenant standing. They had seen it. They had seen it. I believe God wants us to see a difference. In these days, between the believer and the unbeliever. How it manifests in so many areas. How many of you believe that God has made a provision of healing and health for his people? A miraculous and a supernatural benefit that the world cannot claim until they come under his covering. I don't know about you, but I plead the blood of Jesus over my life and over my household. I plead the blood of Jesus over the family of this church. I believe that there is a place that we can walk that no weapon the enemy forms can prosper against us. I believe when the enemy comes in like a flood. Have you seen that? When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord God will lift up a standard against him. On our behalf, I believe that there is a secret place that we can dwell, a secret place of the Most High, and we can dwell under his wings. Listen, God told Israel, I know you've seen all this. You've witnessed everything that happened to those Egyptians. But none of it's going to happen to you. I'm going to keep you from it. I'm going to shield you from it. I'm going to protect you from it. None of those diseases I'm going to allow to come against you. I don't know about you today. I hope I do know about you, but I'm placing my faith in a faithful God whose name is above every name. His name is Jehovah Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Going to get real right now. Where do, you, where do you stand with this COVID thing? How, how does COVID affect your faith? How has it affected your faith? I believe the church needs to take a stand and believe God in the midst of this pandemic. And we need to be drawing a bloodline around our families. Last Sunday we talked about being practicing Christians. Listen to this. I believe that God, I believe the will of God is that he wants to use the church for breakthrough and deliverance. 
where man's best efforts are failing. I said, man's best effort, let's just be real. They're falling short. I believe, I believe there is a concern. I'm not one that thinks this is a bunch of, uh, of baloney. I, I know people are getting sick. I know people are dying. There should be a concern. But I also believe that the world is in a panic today. And I believe many of them want all of us to be in a panic. But we are not of this world, church. And we have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And I want to encourage you today not to accept the fear. But to rise up in faith. Because our God is faithful. Listen to what the psalmist said in the 20th Psalm verse 7. He said, some trust in chariots. And some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord. Do you remember the name of the Lord? What is his name? He made sure we understood. Jehovah Rapha. I am your healer. The world has come with its best attempt to protect from the virus in the form of a so-called virus, a vaccine. That's all you hear right now. Vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. Need to get the vaccine. Need to be fully vaccinated. Need to get that third booster. Put the mask on. Mask, mask, mask. That's all you're hearing. You know what? A lot of people have taken the vaccine and have found it not only ineffective, but they have experienced additional ill effects, and some of them even death. Others still have taken it and found out they're still susceptible to the virus, and they're still able to spread it, and they're still required to do all the stuff the unvaccinated are. Now, I know right now there's a little fact checker somewhere that is just the top of his head is blowing off. There's a little red flag that's, that's flown up saying that I'm speaking false or incomplete information. The truth is, they're spreading incomplete information. But it's their message. It could be that they don't want us to hear anything but their message and they want us to believe their story. Now listen, don't anybody get mad at me for saying the truth. And don't any of you write me a big old long hate mail email for what I've said. If you've taken the vaccine, I'm going to say as I have said all along. You need to stay in faith about it. I hope you did it in faith. I hope you're staying in faith about it. If you are trusting simply in that shot to protect you, you have left yourself dangerously vulnerable to both the virus and the misinformation about it. Stay in faith. But folks... Again, I'm just speaking truth. I know some of you are uncomfortable. I'm sorry. Does the truth, surely in the church, the truth don't make you uncomfortable, does it? Or some of you say, oh, I don't think Pastor should have went there. He should have left that alone. Lord, he, he's getting in a very controversial thing. That's a problem. We've tried to mealy mouth. Mealy mouth, stay in the middle, don't ruffle no feathers, but the truth is the truth, and the truth will set you free. And here is the truth, folks. We need to recognize 
that we have come up against a hard place. All of us. I don't know about you, but I, 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 I don't like the place that we've been in for over a year. I don't like the place that they're trying to lead us to in the months going forward. You can see it coming, can't you? you if, if you can't hear it and see it, man, you done, you done had a trial run last year. We've come up against a hard place. But for the people of God, I believe that there is only one path. And that is the one that we trust our God to open for us. There's another one in the fire standing right by me. There's another one in the water holding back the sea. That's what I'm going to claim. Yeah, there's a vaccine available. Well... There's a shot available. Doesn't really fit the definition of a vaccine, but there is something there that is available. But a lot of people have left here with it. But you and I have access to something more powerful and more reliable, more proven. Oh boy, there's a word. You know, that shot hasn't been proven. But the blood of Jesus has. I got to say this. I haven't told anybody not to take the vaccine. I ain't told anybody to take it. I'm going to say that again. That's between you and God. Whether you had it or whether you ain't, though, you need to be in faith. God said if we would trust Him, if we will hearken diligently to His word, Some people are listening to the news all day long. They're listening to podcasts all day long. They're on Facebook all day long, and they listen to a lot of stuff diligently. But he said if we would listen to his words diligently, if we would hearken, if we will keep his commandments, if if we will do what is right in his eyes, then he will spare us from the diseases that are coming upon the world. Wonder how many more variants there are going to be. How many different boosters there's going to have to be. But God said, none of these diseases. I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I'm believing that God is speaking to our hearts about who he is and the difference he wants to make for us. You know, there might be somebody here. You know, we ain't talking about right now believing God for a headache. Whether you have faith for healing, it's not a life and death thing if you've got a headache. I believe in praying for headaches, though. I believe in pr- praying for arthritis pain. I believe in praying for nausea, chest pain. All that, I believe in all that. But those things may not be life and death thing.
But there may be some things out ahead of us that we're going to face. And it's going to be very important that we understand that it's a part of our faith. It's a part of the Jesus that we know that he provided access to his supernatural healing. He said to the people, I'm your healer. Do you believe he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? When something has come against you that seems to be affecting everything and every living being on the face of the earth, God says, hey, child of mine, I want you to know something. I'm your healer. I am your healer. Put your trust in me. Listen, I'm not trusting a shot. I'm pleading the blood. We hear a lot of people say today, big buzzword, trust the science. Much could be said about that, but I'm simply going to say what is being pushed on us today is not following the science. Most of it ain't even following common sense. So I'm not following the so-called science. I am following my Savior. And I'm urging you to do the same today. Listen. Go ahead and stand to your feet. I want you to hear these words and know that God is speaking directly to you. I heard again early today, I heard Pastor Perry say, God said his people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I want to quote you another one found in Psalms. It says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their diseases. Listen to this. God wants you to hear this. He wants you to understand. He wants this to resonate in your spirit. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. He said, I'm your healer, and none of these diseases. trust him today Would you bow your heads with me as we go to the Lord in prayer Heavenly Father in this day when we find ourselves facing something that we are sure that the enemy has brought our way. We've come up against a hard place. What seems to be an impasse. But we remember but God. You ain't done. This is an opportunity, Lord, where you show yourself strong on our behalf. And so, Father, I pray that at this time, when the world needs the healer, 
at this time when the church desperately needs the healer. When you need us to be strong in our faith and to be a practicing church that prays for the sick and lays hands on the sick and sees you heal the sick. Lord, today, We believe that you are our healer. We put our trust in you. Father, if there's anyone present today that is sick, Lord, even now be their healer. Let them experience your touch today the manifestation of wholeness in their life. As we continue further on in the observance of Holy Communion, help us, Lord, to embrace the fullness of our covenant with you. In Jesus' name, amen.